Welcome to this edition of Berkshire Now News Magazine, where we explore news and views from around the Berkshires. On July 17th, a citywide art show was held in the neighborhoods of the artists themselves. The show was designed as a temporary replacement for the first Friday art walks on North Street. Since the art walks and similar events have been canceled because of the COVID-19 pandemic situation, it was thought that this might be a suitable replacement. It was first scheduled for July 3rd, but two consecutive Friday afternoon rainstorms pushed the event to the 17th. Dozens of artists participated and were located at 43 locations. Some of these locations were actually billboards scattered around Pittsfield. We were able to interview 12 of the participating artists and even got to see two of them actually creating works of art. We also interviewed the organizer of the event, Jesse Tobin McCauley. So Jesse, I understand you are the organizer of this um, event and could you tell us a little bit about how you came up with the idea and what it took to get it all organized and get people involved? Um, yeah, I am the organizer, and I had initially learned about it from a friend of mine who found an article in the New York Times about um, a gentleman who did it in Long Island, and I figured it would be a great thing for Pittsfield. Um, the first Friday's art walk was on hold because of corona, and this just seemed like a wonderful idea. Um, it, artists had been stuck in their homes all you know, through these months, um, and everyone was still creating, so we needed kind of a platform to get out and escape from kind of what's going around, going on now, and the scariness of it and everything. So, um, yeah, I organized it through, with the help of Jen Glockner at Cultural Pittsfield. She was a great resource to me. Um, she kind of got the word out. I did a Facebook event and did some e-blasts with uh, the First Friday's Art Walk and got people to participate. They just had to send me their address and then they got on the list. And then whoever wanted to go around and look or drive, walk or bike by um, could do so. So we got around 35 artists, I would say, and some billboards around town too, and some mosaics. Um, there was everything from sculpture to abstract to landscape to pottery. It was great. It was a lot of people signed up and a lot of people from different um, mediums. So, um, yeah, and then it kind of went off pretty well, just a little bit delayed. <laughs> yes, two times because of rain. Yes, and the third time was not going to defeat me. <laughs> so. Well, you know, it had been raining right up to about 4 o'clock that day because I was out um, on my way to the first artist and it was still sprinkling. Yeah, I know. My husband put up my stuff in the front yard, and he put up the post, and he waited in, until 4 o'clock to actually put the paintings out. And I think a lot of people were delayed probably about a half hour, which was fine. Um, according to the weather, it was going to pass and be a really nice night, and I just couldn't have it be delayed any longer. I felt like people were maybe just going to lose some interest um, and be a little tired to keep hearing about it being canceled. So end up being a great night. Um, a lot of people were out driving around, some walking around. Um, yeah, and everyone just, like, I think thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm really happy that it finally did work out. Have you gotten any feedback from any of the artists? Yeah, from a majority of people have emailed me or stopped by with their lawn sign and let me know just what a great plan it was and, a, like, a great event and a great night and um, just how nice it was to see people and people to – um, be exposed to art and the artists would like to have it happen again um, the people who drove by or walked by definitely would like to see it happen again the response has been nothing but positive for sure um, and on the upside some artists have sold some work so that's wonderful um, we got all of our stuff out of our homes and people could see what we we're all up to so yeah I think um, unlike some people who would like it to be happening I guess every month which just doesn't seem feasible for um, just me. <laughs> um, I do think that we might uh, turn it into um, an annual event, maybe in the springtime. But we'll have to think about it. I'll need a little downtime, then we'll just I'll talk amongst myself about it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. And um, 
my observations of it were that uh, there were a lot of people very interested in doing it. And those that, that were out looking around um, were all wearing masks and being very yep. respectful mm-hmm. of social distancing. So that was a great thing to see as well. Yeah, it was definitely a safe event. People stayed in their cars if they wanted to. Um, some people were biking by. Whoever um, was walking by, they had their masks on. People were, you know, spread out. It wasn't, um, I didn't feel like it was an unsafe event, and it was definitely meant to kind of be spaced out and not have a big crowd. So, um, yeah, that definitely worked out um, well. With, with some events, you know, it's easy to tell how many spectators there were. With this yeah. event, it would be very difficult to tell how many spectators there were, but just yeah. in your neighborhood alone, I would say there were at least 150 or so that were out and about. Yeah, walking around around here because there was probably a good 20 stops um, in the southeast area off of Dawes, um, off of Williams. But um, I do know other places up near Pontusic Lake. They had, you know, all their neighbors come and people did drive by. There was a bunch of people I heard that um, did follow the whole list and did the, do the whole list either on their bicycle or um, driving. And um, I know a woman on Maplewood, she said she had was engaged with her neighbors. And it just, you know, it was a chance to, um, for everyone to experience some art, but then also to reconnect with your neighbors. And we've kind of all been confined and disconnected and, it just was um, a good time to kind of come back together and meet people maybe you hadn't met before or know that now your your neighbor is an artist. Mm, so, yeah. Exactly. Great for the whole community. Mm-hmm. It was. Jesse, thanks so much for your efforts and for your time today. Thank you. My medium is acrylic. I've been painting since about 2014 and... As you can see, cats are my thing, wild jungle cats. I occasionally dabble in other things, but I don't know. I'm just captivated by their wild beauty. Uh, I did take some lessons with Michelle, the painter, who's out on North Street. She has a wonderful place. She's still giving (coughs) lessons online, Um, and she was a wonderful instructor. She got me started. I do have an online business that I've created with some of these paintings. And I just sell some of the prints and some items made from them. Um, My favorite, of course, the lions. I love them. Um, Moving into white bengals has been my latest endeavor. Each painting takes between three and six months to complete. There's a lot of different layers that go into them. This is a good example of one that I've just started. This has about, I'd say about 14 hours into it so far. And I imagine the completed work will take until somewhere around November. There's so many great artists in the city of Pittsfield. I hope everyone gets a chance to look at all the art displays today all over the county. We've been waiting for so many rain dates to get them on display. Hi, I'm Scott Taylor. I'm a Pittsfield artist. Um, And actually, I happen to be wearing the shirt that pretty much tells a lot about me. I eat, I sleep, and I paint. Um, and anybody knows me will probably know that I do all three of those. Um, we're out here uh, today because of the um, COVID has really not only hurt people like musicians, but also artists. And we've had several shows that have been canceled. Uh, but uh, Jesse Tobin McCauley came up with a great idea to do a First Friday's Art Walk that's actually in our neighborhood. So this is my house. These are my paintings. My my gallery, or not gallery, but studio is up in the stationary factory in Dalton, Massachusetts. It's open to the public. Um, I'm on Facebook. The best thing to do would be just kind of let me know ahead when you're coming up, but please come up. That's where there's about 2,700 paintings of mine that are here. Um, I also show some work uh, at the uh, Hillcrest Cancer Center and Proprietors Lodge. So if you're there, please take a look at those. Um, and I, I don't know if Bruce can get this, but I, I happen to have an incredibly talented neighbor uh, who's with us now. 
and and his name is is Gary Miller, and he's one of the premier vibe players. Um, and hopefully he'll get a shot of him and and talk a little bit more about him. But this is my work. music all my life. Uh, I uh, started on piano, played brass instruments, uh, was a drummer for a long, long time, uh, became a vibe player because I was very interested in jazz and kind of took the elements of the other instruments uh, and kind of combined those. Uh, write a lot of my own stuff. Uh, that last song, that was mine. So, and I've been, been playing for uh, a long, long time. And uh, I know Scott because uh, I, <laughs> I taught at Miss Hall School, so I was the music person there. And I was the AV person, so tailored sound. I, I, I bought a lot of stuff from there. And uh, we became friends. I, I played at Scott and Gina's wedding, and we ended up being neighbors. <laughs> so, so I played for a lot of Scott's uh, openings and other art show openings as well. Uh, I've been doing photography for most of my life and um, in Pittsfield here I've been in um, numerous art shows and I've been in arts and crafts shows and a few gallery shows around the county also over the years. Um, uh, it was disappointing that the first Friday's Arts Walks had to be canceled this year because of the coronavirus but this is the uh, substitute uh, for that I guess, uh, the city art show, uh, drive, walk and bike today. And uh, uh, the, the photographs I have here are mostly are all printed on canvas, which is uh, a medium I like very much. Uh, there's a, a variety of locations, um, Cape Cod over here and Olympic National Park in Washington and Brooklyn, New York, uh, Tallinn, Estonia. And the three on, two on the ladder are uh, poster pictures I've made uh, one on Cape Cod and one in Berkshires. The next, uh, the next one over is um, a scene in, in New York City. And um, the one on the end is uh, uh, that was taken in, on the coast of Oregon. The one next to that is one by my wife, which she took with her smartphone over at Canoe Meadows Wildlife Sanctuary. So we're really happy that the rain ended just in time to get this thing started today. Uh, it's been delayed for a couple of weeks and uh, hopefully um, more people are going to come around and take a look at it. I'm having fun. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm an oil painter primarily. I do some drawings, but these are my bread and butter. Um, I paint with uh, thin layers of transparency about uh, 30 layers per painting. So they're built up slowly, paint it, let it dry, paint it, let it dry. But that allows the light to go into the painting about 30 layers deep and then emerge back out, which uh, gives you this beautiful glow because yet your eye notices the light emerging from within the surface of the painting instead of just merely reflecting off of the surface. And that gives them this kind of aura about them. Uh, so I paint at uh, the Lichtenstein Center for the Arts in Pittsfield. Um, I live in Beckett, Mass, uh, so I'm kind of in this area. Um, and I've shown quite a lot uh, in the area and, and, and elsewhere, but Pittsfield is my primary. I used to uh, uh, curate shows at uh, Stephen Valenti's for First Friday's Arts Walk, so I do a lot of extra things other than my own artwork. And I'm also assistant to the director at Freeling Heisen Morris House and Studio in Lenox. So I'm kind of all around in the arts. I'm on the um, 
Berkshire Art Association uh, board, things like that. So I've, I've kind of done a lot in the arts. So Sean, mm -hmm. um, you said there's about 30 or 40 layers of paint. Yeah. Oil paint. Mm -hmm. So that mean, does that mean each layer has to dry before you can put it on the next one? And if so, how long does it take to make one of these paintings? Yeah, that's a, a great question. So yeah, each layer has to dry before I can paint another layer on. They are thin and I use um, a medium called uh, liquid when I paint them, which has a dryer agent in them. So a normal oil painting might take a week or so to dry. These take about a day uh, per layer. So that still means I need to paint it, let it dry for a day, and then paint an another layer. So each painting with my schedule takes about three months of work to complete. Uh, but you get this kind of jewel sort of surface, the, sh the shiny surface. Um, I, it, I equate it to river rocks when you cover it with water. It has that sheen to it, um, and, and I like that as a surface. So these, because of that buildup, don't need any varnish afterwards to get this gloss. That is all a part of those many layers being applied. And the liquid. And the liquid as a part of it. Yep. So it's, and be, I'm using the liquid uh, as transparency to make each layer translucent so that I can do that many layers on a painting, still see them all. But that also gives it a little bit of gloss each time I apply it. Okay, I've been into photography ever since I was like 10. And um, it's a, just a hobby for me. So uh, these, these I uh, shot when I was visiting my daughter in Italy a couple times. And um, it's over, uh, Cinque Terre is uh, some of these. Um, Piazza is right here. Uh, this is like Como. This one I can't, uh, th this one's in Berkshire County, the, the one on metal. Uh, this one, I, geez, I don't remember where that one was. Uh, this, this one's near the Duomo in Milano. And um, it's like a shopping center. It's really nice. But uh, most of them were in Cinque Terre. See how they built up into the uh, rocks and stuff. It was really picturesque. And uh, I just love shooting there. Well, I graduated from Lesley University um, with an MFA in visual art. I am also an art professor for two community colleges. I teach online art appreciation and art history. And I'm a practicing artist as well as a business owner. Recently, I launched a new um, exhibition in nature series called Close to Home, Art, History, and Nature. And our first exhibition will be at Sheep Hill in Williamstown, Massachusetts, July 20, uh, 24th through the 31st. Right here, I have a series called The Stones Will Cry Out. And it's a series of approximately 24 large scale paintings. Um, they have been displayed in various gallery settings, as well as you can see here in nature. Um, I also have a smaller series on the table that is new. Um, it's called Unnamed, and it's to honor all of those who are reduced to a statistical number. So those who maybe passed away from a virus by themselves in a hospital or the workers who worked so hard to save them. Mike Cardi is here creating his last, latest, I should say, masterpiece. To be determined, but that's what we're going for. I see a box car with that on it. I plead the fifth. <laughs> but you may have, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's it. 
Now, it looks like you use the same cap for all your cans. So, this is my cap of choice, and I am just being, eh, for lack of a better word, cheap, because these caps are becoming really hard to find. So, rather than use up a bunch just doing this, I'll just keep switching it, and I can probably do this whole thing with one. You know, there's the science behind that. Watch out for this guy behind you. Watch your wallet. <laughs> this guy behind you. So I paint in all materials, but right now the latest pieces in the past like three years are all acrylic and some with gold leaf. And um, what inspires me, uh, that fluctuates. And I, I love the outdoors. I am inspired by walking up a cliff. I am inspired by looking up at trees. Um, this is a looking up at trees thing and just, I, I like anything, anything, uh, whatever, um, really emotionally moves me is what I will paint. And I do not want to paint it, the, the physical depiction of it per se. I want to paint the feeling that I, I get from it. Mind you, you never really can capture something like that, but, um, it's, that's part of the process of learning and, just non-stop uh, painting and learning, painting and learning. Oh, no, uh, to think that I could paint during a show, but I'm trying. So, So what I want to do is get more of this sky-like imagery down here. And uh, kind of hard. But so I am using acrylic mixed with a great deal of water because I really want some gravity, some drips to go down. And that I think would be kind of alluding to water. And I think that might be beautiful. But if it um, is not something that I'm pleased with. I will sand it down and start again. To be honest, I just try new things all the time. There goes a drip. That's good. Um, painting is a process of learning as you go, learning, uh, visually learning. Um, and you know, of course, you got to have some skill set and technique. And I've been doing this for a long time, like since I was very, very small. <laughs> I went to art school and all that. And
Well, um, I have training as an architect. Um, I worked for a while uh, privately as an architect, and then uh, I went to General Dynamics. I worked there. Uh, we did training facilities for the Navy. Um, during all that time, though, in school and all, I've, I've done artwork, and uh, I've, um, I've done this all the way up through the time I retired, and uh, maybe five years ago, and I've been doing it since. So, and architecture kind of is uh, interests me, so I've kind of done that. Tell us about the castle. Well, the castle is um, actually these two things: this one and, and this one. Uh, this this uh, Parthenon goes on top of that column. And it started out as a birdhouse, but it's uh, it's a little too elaborate to be a birdhouse anymore. This one also is going on a column, but it's uh, it's uh, it's modeled after Liechtenstein Castle in Germany, and which is built on a rock column. So it's uh, I happen to have these four columns that I bought from a house down the street maybe 20 years ago, and um, I was going to build a porch in my house, and they sat there forever. My wife says do something with them or get rid of them, so I did this <laughs> and I like to paint so I've done I've done painting at the same time so yeah this one looks very much like Gales up the street oh really yeah well, somebody else said that too yeah this is actually a crab apple tree in the back our backyard and these are uh, uh, cone flowers that my wife grows in the back garden so Well, mostly self-taught. Um, I work with uh, different mediums, mostly wood. This is my sculptures. And then I have also woodcut prints. Um, I take a piece of plywood. Can you see that? I'll get a close-up. Okay. I take the piece of plywood and I carve into it um, and then there, I ink it up oil base ink and then I hand rub them and I get these prints out of them I also like to study other artists so I look at other artists paintings and I uh, copy their work or study their work or interpret their work that's basically it. Mostly it's wood, wood cuts, wood reliefs, and wood paintings, or wood uh, sculptures. Yes, um, I'm a retired art teacher. I taught for over 30 years, 24 in, at Taconic High School, and the last few years since being retired. This is uh, an accumulation of work in acrylics and oils generally um, there a lot of them are still lives a few two portraits one of my son and one of myself um, and they're in acrylic and oil um, since college a long time but I haven't been painting steadily um, except for the last few years more so the last few years My mediums are acrylic and enamel based. I am a mixed media artist, which means I can take any types of materials I would like to and experiment with them by mixing them into the paints, into gels, into different types of glues and pastes. A lot of the artwork that you see here is inspired by the cosmos, universe, a primordial goo that birthed all living things here on earth.
From what we were able to see, this event was very successful and very well attended. Many visitors and artists expressed an interest in this becoming an annual event. Until next time, stay safe and stay strong.